Welcome back to T4 Westside. Uh, today and all this week, in fact, we're here in Los Angeles, home to the biggest stars, the biggest studios, the biggest TV shows, and they don't come much bigger than 24. It's won more Emmys and Golden Globes than you could shake a nuclear weapon at. And it's made one hell of a star of this uh, lovely young man, Carlos Bernard. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for inviting us to uh, the presidential bunker. My pleasure. I've never been here either. <laughs> really? This is quite exciting for you as well. No, I've never been allowed in the presidential bunker. Wow. Okay, you've been playing uh, Tony Almeida since the first series yes. uh, of 24 2001. Now, did you have an inkling this show was going to be... Um, no. I'm used to doing things that, you know, suck. You a bunch name of one that sucks. A bunch of, uh, name one that sucks. Name one that sucks. Yeah. I bet you can't. How about uh, silk stockings? Oh, that sucked bad. That sucked uh -huh. real bad. Is that I, a comedy? About, but that was good compared to Nightman. <laughs> <laughs> now, granted, I wasn't a regular on those. I wasn't even good enough to be a regular on those. I was a um, guest, uh, guest, yeah, guest bad guy or something. Oh, right, okay. Now, in Britain, we're showing um, Series 4. And at the end of Series 3, you were arrested. So we were all quite surprised when you turned up again in Series 4. Were you even quite surprised that your character was brought back? I didn't know how it was going to happen. We had an idea, so when I read the first script and saw how it happened, it was very cool. I liked it. I was very happy. With it. Okay. I mean, what better? <laughs> he gave me a great entrance. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to see Carlos in action. Let's do it, Steve. Here's a clip of Carlos in Nightman. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's 24. Check him out. Check him out. Tony, I've got Jack. Jack. Yeah. We have confirmation. Habib Marwan's controlling the override. He's at the address you're headed to. What about Curtis? No, we haven't been able to reach him yet. Have you changed your assault profiles? We're working on it. Look, Marwan's the key to this. He can't know we're coming or he'll take off with the override. Also, we're running out of time. We have about 20 minutes before these plans start to melt down. Okay, tell Castle to prep for a low-profile assault. Tell him I'm on my way. Copy that. <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> At your performance? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, who else is going to be speechless? I got to be. I tell you one thing that must worry you. It's like the characters in the series, they're randomly killed off. Now, you're just one of... Three characters that's made it from series one to four. Does that mean every time it's like a script meeting, you pull yourself thinking, "Oh my goodness, am I going to be cool?" You know? I I pay the writers off. Yeah. As much as I can afford. Yeah. You know. I bring them little treats. <laughs> I bake cookies over the weekend. Bring them in on Monday. Slip them under the door. Keep those writers <laughs> happy. Right. Yeah. But they are. I mean, they're top secret stories. How much in advance do you get told what your storyline's going to be? We shoot two episodes at a time because of locations. Okay. So while we're shooting the two episodes that we're on, we'll right about the time we're starting these episodes, we'll start to see episodes, uh, scripts coming in for the following episodes. So uh, maybe two weeks. Although this time, the episodes we're shooting now, literally, uh, I got a phone call and said we're starting these episodes next week. The script's coming to your door tonight. So it was, yeah, uh, it was very quick. Yeah. Have you but, accidentally um, ever leaked to Big Storyline to like your mates? Not to them. I do it in interviews sometimes because I can't remember stuff that we shot before. You know, the season's so long to shoot. It yeah. takes 10 months. That by the time we're doing an interview about an episode that was shot maybe, I don't know, six months ago, I might actually accidentally leak a story. But what about, what about uh, Keith Sutherland? Is, is, he, is he naughty boy instead? Any practical jokes? Anything like that? Him? Yeah. Um, he's good to play practical jokes on it. Yeah, we had yeah. you play the practical jokes. Exactly, because he's Canadian and they're very gullible, and, um, <laughs> as we all know. And, and so actually, he's actually a good target at times because he's, he's, you know, Kiefer has got a huge heart. He's a really good guy. And he's, and he's uh, terrified of hurting somebody's feelings, so you can really get him that way sometimes. Oh, okay. Okay. And you prey on that side of his personality. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, I'm crazy? Of course I do. Obviously, you've got a lot of sex appeal with the, with the show and stuff. What about uh, now that you're Mr. Top 50 Most Desirable Man in the World? Yep. What about groupies and stuff? Is that a problem for you? Or? Well, I, w I was kicked off of that list, first of all. That was, that's, that's old. They don't kick you. Uh, no. Not anymore, baby. Well, was yeah. that like, what was that like last you know, year? I think so, yeah. How was that year for you? <laughs> no, it's surprisingly dry, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah. You wouldn't think. You'd think it'd do something for you, but no. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Carlos Bernal, for joining us. Okay.